All right. Uh, Zion's coming back, which is a great thing. Uh, but there was one gentleman who left. We thought it was under family reasons. Um, but then he was pictured at a strip club. We talking none other than the legend Lou Will. Now, for people who don't know, you go back through the archives uh, because we both posted it not only on social media on ours, but Real Fans Real Talk. We talked about this back in February that Lou Will is a legend in his own right, and he just continues to add to the stature. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what can you say? I need his autograph. When I see him, I got to get his autograph first and foremost because the things that he's able to accomplish, you know, most men dream about. <laughs> right. I mean, listen, you got to be it, – it takes a, a big set of you-know-what to finesse the NBA it's a hey I need to get up out of here I got a little situation I need to attend to for a few days and then you get pictured in the strip club bro like you you hanging out I'm not saying that the family emergency isn't legit don't get me wrong I'm not saying that it might be a, a real family emergency but you can't be at the strip club Lou you got to bring the strip club to you but you know what what happens is you know and a lot of people you know don't realize this Sometimes that, you know, when you got stuff, tensions and stuff building up inside, you need that, 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 you know, that mental release and whatnot. And the best place to go for that is to the office or the strip club as, as uh, Lou Williams did, the good brother Lou Williams. I mean, listen, I'm not mad at Lou. Uh, as I posted yesterday, is legendary. Again, Lou is, just, listen, Lou, you have a big supporter in me. I'm a supporter of Lou Will. I'm just saying that I understand that there's going to be like now this negative aspect to it. Um, Doc Rivers already came out yesterday and said, you know, the, obviously the organization wasn't thrilled to find out that he was at a strip club. He doesn't know how that's going to affect the quarantine process for him now, um, because when the, the players are away, they're supposed to be uh, still tested frequently to make sure that they have not come in contact or contracted the virus. But now that you've been in a club around 100, 200 some odd people, now it's like, all right, are you mandatory back to a 14-day quarantine? What's going to happen when he comes back? And ultimately, it could affect his role with the team once he gets back to the bubble. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, again, like you said, Eric, personally, you know, the legend continues. If I'm, if I'm a member of the Clippers organization, I'm probably pissed as a mug right now because, one, you know, we're talking about, you know, somebody that's probably going to be Six man of the year, unless unless the teammate Montrez gets it or they wind up splitting it. But Lou Williams is so important to that team because the Clippers are really a defensive team. They don't have too many guys that can just get out there and put up points. And there's not too many guys in the league period that can come in and put up points the way that Lou Williams can. So they they definitely need Lou Williams there. You know, um, maybe not for the regular season. It's not like they're gonna fall out of playoff contention if he has to quarantine during the rest of this regular season, you know, but we don't know how, how long, you know what I'm saying? Some people go through that 14 days and they're still not good. So we don't know exactly, you know what I'm saying, what's going to happen. I hope that he, he doesn't test positive for COVID just because I'm the type of person where I always want the team that I want to win to win, but I don't want to have excuses as to why, oh, well, young, they only won because such and such wasn't there or because this happened. So I want him to be there and, 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 and be, you know, ready to go, ready to play at full strength for the, for the restart of the season. But we don't we, – he's probably not going to be there for the first couple of games if he makes, you know, the, the regular season at all. Just because if you're talking about a, a two-week quarantine, that's going to run into these regular season games. Right. And, and again, that's, I'm not guaranteeing that that's what the NBA is going to do. I I strongly believe there will be some sort of delayed quarantine process for him. Again, the season kicks off this Thursday, so we're four days away. Um, even if he were to get back to Orlando today or tomorrow, they're going to make him quarantine for a few days, you know, again, because he was around a, a group of people. And so now you can't just do the standard two-day procedure of, oh, just quarantine yourself. Now we got to extend it and be a little more precautious on this uh, because we know who you were around. Um, but you're right. He is shippers was around though too. Them shippers right, have been right, anybody. right. You know, what I mean, it's, it, listen, when it's uh, when it's scattered, you know what everywhere. You never know what's what's exactly. in the air. You know what I'm saying? But um, <laughs> you're you're absolutely right. Lou is very vital to the success of the Clippers. He's one of the guys who makes them very dangerous in this restart. We know about Kawhi and Paul George, but when you have a guy like Lou who's giving you 18 to 20 points off the bench, 
now that takes your team to a whole nother level because there aren't many teams who can compete with that type of second unit. Um, and you mentioned Montrez as well. So I, I hope it is not an extended quarantine. I hope he's on the court as quickly as possible. But we also know that the NBA may try to set an example in this one here. Yeah, and, and you know what? They're they're completely justified in doing so because you know you 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 honestly you put the entire restart at risk by going outside for you know for some, some TNA. You know, which listen I, again, I understand it. Everybody likes a little TNA every once in a while, but we're trying to conclude this season. And you cannot be be taking them chances of putting putting your teammates, putting other people in the bubble at risk of catching the coronavirus because you want to go see some scared ass. I'm sorry, you just can't you just can't do that. So you know if if they if the league does punish him or uh, or does something to him, they're completely justified in it. They're gonna want to set the tone. We spoke last week about uh, Rashawn Holmes from the uh, from the Kings going out, you know, just you know leaving for a second to grab some food. You know, at some point, the league is going to have to say, listen, you know, either we're going to have to sit some of these guys down for, for a game or fines or something because we cannot risk the, the remainder of the season being jeopardized because cats want to keep going outside of the, the bubble for these non, you know, descript things. Yeah, and we got to remember, too, because Lou Will's from Georgia. I'm assuming he went back to Georgia uh, for this family emergency, and we know how that has become a hot spot for the virus. So that's something else to keep in mind as well. Um, like I said, personal note, Lou Will, you the legend, bro. I, it is what it is. But professionally, um, and, and us loving sports and wanting sports to come back, we also want to make sure that all the players are safe and that this thing runs smoothly. So we got to pay attention to see how that changes, What's though. Good? It's your boy Daylight. You're now tuned in with RealFansRealTalk.com. Bye, y'all. Real talk, we as real as you thought.